thing right there, right? Yes. And as he's doing this, he starts to go towards the bike, right? Yes. Taking him down at that point, couldn't you? Shoot him? No, you could have put your gun down in the holster, couldn't you? No. You couldn't have put... In the holster and stopped him physically. You the, couldn't have done that. The threat is still an active threat. I gave I'm him not, commands. I'm not asking you if he threatened. Uh, uh, wait. Let him finish his answer. Let him finish his question so that we only have one person talking at the same time. Yes, sir. Mr. Martinez. I'm not asking you if the threat is active, sir. I'm asking if you physically could have stopped him from going to get the bike. I didn't feel that was an option at the time. He moved, and I don't think I had time to holster my gun and stop him. You had the gun in your hand, right? Yes. You could have holstered it, right? I don't think I had time to holster the gun and stop him from grabbing the I'm gun. I'm not asking you if you had time to holster and stop him. You had time to holster the gun, didn't you? No, I did not. So there was, there was, he was holding on to your hand such that you physically couldn't put it down, right? That's what you're saying? No. He was moving in this direction, wasn't he? Towards the bike, right? Yes. And a bicycle is an implement of transportation, isn't it? Yes. You're familiar with the fact that people ride them all the time, they go from place to place, right? Yes. And when he's there, he walked on over to the bicycle, right? Uh, his movement was a little more than just a walk. It was a quick movement to the bicycle, right? Yes. And he's in front of you when he does that, right? He's off to my right. Right. He goes over and he gets the bicycle, correct? Yes, sir. At that point, you're standing right here to his right, correct? I had moved. I had moved back some. So now you're further away from him, right? Not that far. You're further away from him right about here, right? <laughs> further back that way. Right here? That's about right. And he has the bicycle, right? Yes, sir. He doesn't pick it up immediately, does he? Yes, he did. He picked it up immediately, right? Yes, he did. And he starts to roll it back, doesn't he? No. If he picked it up immediately, this is where he picked it up, over here, right? It was a little further away from that. Right over here. Yes. Right? Yes. He picked it up, and this is when you say he picked it up, and this is when you were really, really scared, right? He raised it up over here. He picked the bike up. The bike came up over his head over here. So it came, so he's got this bicycle over here, and he's not rolling it then, right? No, sir. He's actually picked it up physically right here, correct? Yes. And he picks it up and he moves this way, right? Yes. And he picks it up to the point that it's over his head, right? He picked it up. I don't recall if it cleared over his head. I remember it being right up around here when I well, fired. You remember the demonstration that you did, how high the bicycle was? You told us that's how it was with the bicycle right in front of you. Do you remember doing that demonstration? I do. And the bicycle was up here like that. He had the physical strength to pick it up, right? Yes, sir. Where was Officer Virgil at that time? I don't know. Weren't paying attention to him? No. He wasn't speaking at all to the defendant? No. I'm, I'm sorry, he wasn't speaking at all to Mr. Uh, Rodriguez? No. He didn't hear a word? I didn't hear that, no. Was, it, was uh, Mr. Rodriguez saying anything? <laughs> Let out a, a, a groan, like a, a growl, and his teeth were clenched. His and he teeth let were clenched, and he let out a growl, and he picked up his bicycle, right? Yes, sir. And he picked up his bicycle, and he was how far away from you, was he? Maybe three feet. So he was about three feet away from you, right? Yes, sir. About from distance from me to this woman here, right? I said maybe three feet. I don't think that's three feet. Well, is this three feet right here? Tape measure. Pardon? Do you have a tape measure? No, I don't have a tape measure. You're the one that says it's three feet. I said it's approximately three feet, maybe and three feet. You can't tell me whether or not that's approximately three feet, right? It's close, yes. And at that point, the bicycle, he's got it in his hand, right? Yes. And he's got this bicycle in his hand, and you decide you're going to take your shot, right? It was a reaction, not a decision. I'm, so you're saying you weren't thinking at that point then, right? It's a reaction, not an intention, right? Yes. And if it's a reaction at that point, and you're not thinking then, what could possibly be going through your head if you're just reacting? Reacting to the threat. 
What you're saying is it's not your fault. That's what you're saying, right? Oh, I'm absolutely not saying that. Well, you said you just reacted, right? Yes, I did. Which means you weren't thinking about it, right? I'm reacting. I'm reacting to the threat. And the threat, as you're telling us now, is an individual with a bicycle up his car, right? In front of your face, right? Yes, sir. And it's in between you and that three feet, and in between you, your gun, and your body, right? Yes, sir. And you're holding the gun again like this, right? Yes, sir. And you're holding that, which is about chest level, right? Yes, sir. You're about what, 5'7"? Five, 5'6". Seven? Five, you're 5'6", five, and holding it up right about here is about 5 feet 4 inches off the ground, right? Right about here, right? I have no idea. Huh. You, you don't know how high your shoulders are. Would it be about 5 feet? Or, or you don't know? I don't know. But you're holding it up right about shoulder level, right? Right up here. And the bicycle's right in between you, right? And he's holding it there, right? He raised it up, and I fired. And it was, it was, it's, it's between you and him at the time that you fired, right? It is, yes, it is between us. So that if you take a shot... And the shot, you did take it, right? He was in front of you, face to face, right? Yes. If you take that shot, and that shot is fired, the bullet, by necessity, has to go through the bicycle and, and, and anything that's in the way, right? Through the bicycle, over the bicycle, under the bicycle. Well, the bicycle's in the way, isn't it? It has to go through an opening. Well, but the bicycle's even closer to the muzzle of the gun, isn't it? Yes. Then his body is, right? Yes. And if there are any particles that are flying from the, the gun, those particles, if they hit the bicycle, would have created a void on his chest, wouldn't they? That's possible. Well, no, it isn't possible. These particles, although they're going very fast, they don't go through the metal, do they? You didn't see that? You didn't see any of that. No, that didn't happen, right? I don't know. If you were perceiving this threat, why aren't you paying attention to the bicycle then? The suspect is the threat. I fired on the suspect. I thought you said that you were afraid he was going to take that bicycle and knock you on the head with it. Something like that. Didn't you say something like that? I did. Right? Yes. And that bicycle is an in between you and that individual that is the threat, according to you, right? Yes. And that shooting that you indicated to us was one right after the other, right? Yes. Those two shots, right? I don't know. Weren't you paying attention? As much as I could. Yes, I was. You were focused on it, right? I was tunneled in on the thread at that point. Yeah, that's your, the thread is him holding the, the bicycle, right? Yes, sir. And you don't know what Officer Virgil was doing at that time, right? I do not. And was this sort of tunnel vision or this looking that you had at the time that the fight was up, that's the same tunnel vision that you had when you went to the door the first time, or the second time, right? You left Officer Vigil behind and didn't even know where he was, right? You were focused on what you were going to do, right? I was not tunneled in on the door. Well, you were tunneled in on what you were going to do, right? I was moving in the direction of the door to knock. I had a job to do. I was not tunneled in. There was no lethal confrontation at that point that would cause a tunnel vision. You keep saying it's your job. Your job is not to kill people, is it? It's to investigate crimes, isn't it? My job is to investigate crimes. And it's to pay attention and observe with regard to events that are going on, correct? As much as possible, yes. Well, and, and when you're in this kind of situation, adrenaline is flowing, isn't it? In the confrontation, yes. And there's a heightened sense of understanding of what's going on, right? I don't know about the heightened sense. Well, you're able to see what's going on and you're really paying attention, right? As much as possible, yes. And even though you're paying attention and there's this heightened sense of what's going on, you can tell us that the bike was up here for the first shot. For whatever reason, you can't tell us where the bike was on the second shot, right? That's what I'm saying. I don't have anything else. Are you right? What does tunneled in mean? Tunneled in, uh, it's when you're in a lethal confrontation, uh, you 
the adrenaline takes over. Uh, it's a the adrenaline is kind of a survival mechanism. You start to lose vision um, on the periphery, and you kind of focus directly on only the threat. And at the time that you fired on the suspect, what was the threat? The suspect. Mr. Martinez asked you several questions about when the suspect stepped over for the bike, whether or not you could physically stop him. Do you recall those questions? Yes, sir. Had you tried to physically control him before that? Yes, I did. More than once? Yes, sir. Had any of those been successful when you were alone in there? No. At the time he went over towards that bike, did you see anyone else other than you and him? No. Was he a physical threat to you with that bike at the moment that he touched it? Yes, sir. Was he a lethal threat when he touched it? Jackson, like a foundation. Over when he touched it. Mr. He Martinez asked you why you didn't shoot him when he picked up when he first went to the bike. You recall those questions? Yes. So when he first touched the bike, was he a lethal threat? No. When did he become a lethal threat to you, officer? When he raised the bicycle up to hit me with it. Did he actually strike you with it? No. Did you believe he attempted to? Yes. Is that why you used it? Yes, sir. This was the knife that was actually found on the suspect. You heard Mr. Martinez's questions, and it's been an issue throughout this trial about this unarmed man. Yes. Is a man with that knife on his physical person, based on your training experience as a police officer, unarmed? No. You know, a lot was also made about your uniform. Did the suspect, to your knowledge, ever grab your uniform? No, not that I can recall. And you were asked a lot of questions about the pen in your pocket. Let me ask you, did you ever write him a note? No. Would you ever take your pen out in this type of situation? No. Why not? Because it was a physical confrontation. Because it was a not a point, not a static situation where you would take your pen out begin writing. Would you ever have given it to him to write you a note? No. Is this the type of situation like Officer Virgil where you go up with your pad to the door? No. Why not? Because again, the, the, the situation is not static. It's not uh, safe. He trained early on in the very beginning that you never approach a situation with an item in your hand, uh, especially your strong hand or your gun hand, your dominant hand. Uh, you never carry objects in that on the approach to a situation, regardless of domestic violence call or a whodunit burglary call. Um, over the years, there have been uh, multiple situations, ambush situations, where officers are responding to calls, and they're simply ambushed. The call's not even a valid call. Well, you recall being asked questions about whether you knew there were bullets in the other bedroom. Yes. Whether you knew there were shotgun shells. Yes. Whether you knew the suspect had a knife on them. Yes. Whether you knew there was an arrow and a compound bow. Yes. When you go to these calls, do you know whether or not someone is armed? No. Did you ever have time to ask the suspect, hey, got any weapons? No, not. Is that one reason why calls inside of a home for domestic violence are so dangerous? Objection leading. Overall, you can answer. You can answer. Yes. There was a 
lot of talk here about where you're standing and what's going on. Uh, pardon me one second, guys. I want to get one more exhibit. Again, what's been marked is 307. You see the doorway. Go ahead and stand up so you can see the tape on the floor. Yes. You see the doorway. We have this blue, which is the entrance into the kitchen. Yes. We also know from the other photographs that we've seen, this space here up against the kitchen is not just open. No, it's not. What else is here? Uh, there are uh, chairs, bags. So uh, the table. there's things there. Yes, sir. There's things in this entrance to the kitchen. Yes. When you do this puzzle retention that you talked about, do you change your stance, how you're standing there? Yes. Come down here, please, main judge. Yes. Show the jurors what you're talking about. And fire up back. Come on back so they can see your feet. Body moves away from the thread. I'm going to stop you right there. Is that how you move that day? So, yes. It's just the reaction of the way you retain the muscle. Because you're which hand dominant? Right hand dominant. And when you step back just now, your right foot came back. Yes, sir. So your left foot would remain forward. <laughs> yes. And the area where you were standing was here by the doorway by these objects. Where we see the blood on this sheet. I was in that area. Yes. And you had blood on your left pant leg. Yes. Yes. You know, a lot was made about this, uh, having a second taser cartridge and whether or not you had that with you. Um, you've seen the photographs of the taser that was outside? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and just so we're clear, immediately after the shooting, when you walk outside the trailer for the first time, where's the first place you see that taser? Outside. There was a second cartridge on it, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Your knowledge officer, Virginia, never used his second cartridge, did he? No. Even had you had a second cartridge with you, do you think there was time to remove the old, put the new one on, and fire again? No. matter we'd move 381 and 382 in evidence. Joan to Mr. Martinez. No objection. 381 382 are admitted, may be published. Thank you.
start with 282. Can I picture this? Let me show you 282. Have you taken a look at that? You were asked many questions about that yesterday. Can you recognize what that is? It's a premise history. Premise history meaning for that particular location on that particular day. I think so. It's Included in there was some information in terms of what went out about the call and an inquiry that you had made. Yes. I'm going to show you 382 and put it up here on the monitor. Zoom it out just a little ways. And we have a 1221. We have a serial number, 07371, Richard Christman. That's you, correct? And that might be a little blurry. Try up there right behind you. It's a no, I, I, I see where you're at. All right, and we see an extended queue for the person, Rodriguez Daniel, with the date of birth and unit 421A. Yes, sir. That's your unit. Yes, sir. This was done at 1221 on your way to the call. Yes. Now, you recall the state's questions just now about well, what you got back isn't on this, and it wasn't on Exhibit 282. No, it's not. But you did get information back on your computer. Yes, sir. Show you what's been marked as 383. That's the information you got back, isn't it? Yes. Move 383 now. So to Mr. Martinez. Yes, I'm sorry. Objection, lack of foundation. Overruled. 383 is admitted, may be published. In addition to the information you've already told us about, dangerous drugs, drug paraphernalia, and weapons violation, there was some other identifying information, too, for the particular person that you got information on, wasn't it? Yes. Got a social security number, a height, a weight, a date of birth, and you also got information about tattoos on the right shoulder and the right arm, didn't you? Yes, sir. And the miscellaneous shows D drugs was what you told us earlier about dangerous drugs. Yes. D para means drug paraphernalia. And WPM slash BL means uh, weapons violation. Carrying a knife like I previously showed you in an exhibit hidden on your person. Yes, sir. Does it, would that be a weapons violation? Uh, a firearm at the time, I don't think they had um, updated it. The weapons violation could have been anything from carrying a concealed weapon to uh, committing a crime with a weapon. A knife could be a weapon, right? Yes, sir. Spoken about? Yes. Let me have you take a look at what has also been placed into evidence. One more time, yes. Exhibit number 381 uh, that we talked about yesterday was the, just like 382 is your unit history, 381 is the unit history for Officer Regia. Yes. All right, may retrieve it. And this exhibit shows us that at 1240, right there, there's an extended queue for a Daniel Rodriguez with that date of birth. Yes. And if we go up right above at 1237, we see the roll four, meaning roll fire. Yes. So that's when the shootings occur. Yes, the 998 roll fires when the shooting occurred. And according to this record, after the shooting, Officer Burkeo ran the suspect's criminal history. Yes. Based on your training experience, is it a regular practice or is it a good police practice to do that on your way to a scene and not afterwards? Yes.
the state asked you a lot of questions about not knowing where Officer Virgil was from the time he walked up to the trailer. Yes. When you're in a situation where there's a contact and cover officer, based on your training and experience, do you normally keep tabs on where the cover officer is? No. Based on your training and experience and nine and a half years on the street as a Phoenix police officer, do you have an expectation of where your cover officer is? Yes. What is that expectation? He is either right there at my side or right there behind me, just a foot, two feet behind me. And when you go hands-on, you touch a suspect, what do you expect your cover officer to do? He goes hands-on with you. Hands, one, one set of hands go on, the other one go on right away. So even if you're right just inside the doorway, or a little bit inside the doorway, and you touch somebody and try and pull them out, and they don't want to come, what are you expecting your cover officer, even if they're outside, is going to do? He should be going hands-on as well. If there's, there's one person with two hands, there should be two cops with four hands. And, and just so that we're clear, this very small space with the trailer and the furniture, were movements, as Mr. Martinez demonstrated, very slow? No, they were not. How are things moving in there? It was very rapid. How was the suspect moving? Very quick. Are those quick movements consistent with what you told us your opinion was? He was using something? Yes. I'm sorry, high on something, I think, for your words? Yes. You recall the state's questions about whether or not uh, if someone is high on meth, they're, they're not entitled to be treated any differently. You recall that? Yes. And you agreed with the state? Yes. Just because somebody's high on meth, does that mean you allow him to bash your brains out? No. Does that mean you allow him to harm you? No, absolutely not. Just a moment, please, Judge. You recall telling Mr. Martinez that it's your job to deal with people who may not want to deal with you? Yes. And Mr. Martinez asked you um, if you were concerned about going to Trailer 51. You recall that question? Yes. And your response was, it's my job. Yes. Is it your job to investigate domestic violence incidents? Yes, sir. That's why you were called there? Yes. Is it your job to leave suspects of crimes inside their home because they don't want to talk to you? No. Is it your job to locate all weapons inside of a residence before you talk to a suspect? No. Is it your job to inform suspects why you're there and then leave the scene with them having access to weapons and the victim right next door? No. And in this particular case, the information that you had was Elvira Fernandez was in fear for her life when she called the police. She was afraid he was going to hurt her. Yes. She was even afraid he was going to come over to trailer 50 and hurt her. Yes, sir. Is it your job, Officer Crisman, when a dog attacks or when you get sprayed with OC spray? Is it your job, Officer Crisman, to run away? No. If your partner goes hands on, what is your job? To go hands on. Did that happen here? No. Thank you, Judge. Anything else? I think there's some questions. Matt? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a. 
a group of questions. Rather than have you watch the lawyers go through them, why don't you go back to the jury room and we'll bring you back as soon as possible. Looking through the stack. Some of them are from yesterday, so you may have seen them. 